Mabuhay! Ako po si Deborah Garcia. Hi! I'm Deborah Garcia and welcome to another lesson where you will learn practical Filipino language in just a few minutes. This is brought to us by NACTV, the local TV channel here in Nipuang, Manitoba. We would love to hear your thoughts about our video, so if you have some comments or suggestions, please write them below or you can send them directly to NACTV at wcgwave.ca. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and please like and share this video. In the previous lesson, we learned about the verbs with prefix mag. Now, we are going to learn another group of verbs, and these are the verbs um and ma. On the board are some examples of ma verbs. So, just like in the previous lesson, we had the mag verb. So, this one, the prefix ma, is like the prefix mag in the previous lesson. So, they're both prefix, so it means they are added before each word or before the verb. And they are added when you are forming the future tense of the verb. So, let's look at the first one. CC. CC means to blame. Okay? So, look at the future tense here. We add the prefix ma here, so it will become ma c c c. Now, why did we have three SIs here? It's because just like in forming the mag verb, what we do after we add the prefix ma, we take the first syllable of the verb. So, the first syllable of the verb cc is c. Then we add it here, it will become ma c. The whole prefix would become ma c. And then we copy the entire verb cc. So, it will become ma c c c. Okay? Look at the past. In the previous lesson, when we form the present tense of the mag verb, we also change mag into nag. Now, this time, from ma, we change it to na. N-A. So, ma c c c will become na c c c. It's the same. We add the prefix na instead of ma. We copy the first syllable of the verb cc, and that is c, and then we copy the entire verb cc, which means to blame. So, verb cc, future tense ma c c c, present tense is na c c c. Now, look at the past tense. It's the same um, pattern when we formed the, the mag verb in the previous lesson. So, we still use the prefix na that we used from the present when we form the past. So we still um, use this prefix and then we do not copy the first syllable of the verb anymore. We just copy the entire verb. So from na c c c, it will become na c c. Base form c c, future ma c c c, present na c c c, Past na si si. Okay? Second, tulog. Tulog means to sleep. So, we add the ma. We copy the first syllable tu from the word tulog. And then we copy the entire verb tulog. So, it will become ma tu tulog. The present is na. The prefix na. And then the first syllable of the word tulog. Na tu. And then the entire verb tulog. So, tulog, future matutulog, present, natutulog, and past, natulog. Without the first syllable of the verb tulog. So, it's just natulog. Very easy, right? This one, nood. Nood means to watch. Future, ma no nood. Present, na no nood. Past, nanood. Next one, tapon. Tapon means to spill. So, future, ma tatapon. Present, na tatapon. Past, natapon. 
Nginig. Nginig means to shiver. So, ma nginig. See, the first syllable is ngi, right? N-G-I, that's the first syllable there. So, we are going to repeat it here. Ma ngi nginig. Present, na ngi nginig. Past, na nginig. Okay? Maybe it's hard to pronounce, but when you go by syllable, you would be able to say it properly. So, but this one, the last one, is an exception to the rule because, see, the verb tanggap means to receive. Now, the first syllable of the word tanggap is tang. But look at the future. Look at the future. It's, we have the prefix ma. But then, when we copy the first syllable, we did not copy the entire syllable. We just copy the first two letters, the ta. Why? Because in the rule, um, instead of copying the entire syllable of the verb, of the, of the first syllable of the verb, then if your first syllable ends in consonant, then you don't copy the entire syllable. So this one... It ended with a G. It's a consonant, right? Unlike with these, it ended with a vowel. Vowel, 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 and vowel. So, we copied the entire syllable. But this one, we just copy the first two letters here. So, it will become ma, ta, tanga. Not ma, tang, tanga. No. So, it's just the first two letters. So, ma, ta, tanga, future. Present, it's the same. We don't copy the entire syllable. So just the first two letters. So present, na, ta, tanga. Past, na, tanga. Okay? Um, we are going to see some examples of sentences once we discuss, after we discuss the next group of verbs. Now let's go to the um verb. So we use this. Affix um, and this is different from the first two that we've studied. The mug and the ma are prefixes. The um is an infix. It means it is placed in between the letters of the word. So let's take a look at the first verb here. The verb bile. Bile means to buy. Look at the future. Another difference from um is very different from the ver the mag and the ma verbs because for those two, those prefixes are added in the future tense of the verb. But um here is added in the present and past tense only. For future, for future tense, we don't add the infix um. Instead, what we do, look at this one, bile. For the future tense, it became be bile. What did we do? We copied the first syllable of the verb bile, and that is b, bi. We put it here, and it became the prefix of the future tense of the verb bile. So it became b bile. So future be bile. Look at the present tense. So we inserted the um. As I said, um is an infix. So it is inserted in between the letters. Where is the um? It's in here. So what did we do with the present tense? We copied the entire uh, future tense of the word bile, which is be bile. And then we inserted the um after the first letter of the word be bile. See? It's B-I-B-I-L-I. It's still B-B-L-E, but we inserted the OM here. Okay? You insert the OM after the first letter of the future tense of the verb. So instead of B-L-E, instead of B-B-L-E, you insert it here. So it became there. And then you add the entire future tense, be bile. So it will become bu mi bile. Look at the past. What we did, we copied the entire base form of the verb bile. So we just copied bile, b i l i. And then we inserted the um again after the first letter 
of the word, of the base form of the verb, bile. Is that easy? Um, let's look at the second one. It's the same. So, gawa. Gawa means to make or to create or to do. Future, we take the first syllable of the base form of the verb gawa. So, ga became the prefix and then we added the entire verb gawa. It became ga gawa. Now, present, we inserted the um after the first letter of the word gagawa. It became gumagawa. The past tense, we copied the entire verse, uh, the entire base form of the verb gawa. And then we inserted the um after the first letter of the word gawa. It became gumawa. So, gawa. Uh, base form, future gagawa, present gumagawa, past gumawa. Okay? This one. Inom. Inom means to drink. What is the first syllable of the word inom? It's just one letter, right? The letter I. Inom. So that's the first syllable. E and then you add the entire verb inom, it will become e inom. Inom, e inom. That's the future. How about the present? Now, this one is a bit different. It's because when you wrote the future tense e inom, e e nom. If you are going to follow the first rule that we had, like insert the um in after the first letter of the future tense of the verb, it will become e u i u m and then you have inom. You won't be able to read this word anymore. So what we do, we don't insert the um here will not be an infix anymore. It will become a prefix. So you add um here and then you copy the entire future tense of the verb inom, which, and then it will become umi inom, okay? It's different from this one. It's just because the first syllable is a con, uh, sorry, is a vowel, so you can't insert it in the middle. So it, the um here will become a prefix. Same with this one, you can't insert it at the middle, so instead of inserting it somewhere here, then you are going to use um as a prefix for the past tense too. So, inom, future e inom, present umi inom, and past tense uminom. Alright? So, the next one is just the same with the previous word. So, kanta, it doesn't start with a vowel, so we are okay. So, kanta means to sing. First syllable, the first syllable of this one is actually kan. But when I discussed the ma verb, I said if, you're, if the first syllable ends with a consonant, then you won't be able to copy the entire syllable. You just copy the first two letters and it will become a prefix here. So it will become from kanta, it will become ka kanta. The reason why you can't copy the entire syllable here is because it will become kan kanta. We don't do that. So just the first two letters for to become the prefix of the future tense of the verb kanta, then it will become ka kanta. Then you copy this future tense into the present tense. You still have that word here, ka kanta. Then you insert the um after the first letter of the verb of the word kakanta, then it will become kumakanta. Past tense, you copy this one, tanta, and then you and you insert the word um, the infix um, so it will become kumanta. Okay? Next one, dating. Dating means to arrive. So, first syllable is da. So, you say da, Dating, not dating, okay? Dating. 
So, da, da, ting. Future. Present. So, you insert the um. It will become duma, da, ting. Some of the people there would say duma, da, ting. I don't know the rule why, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just stick to this one so that we won't be changing any spelling here. So, we insert the um still. It will become duma, da, ting. The past tense. So, you copy the verb da, ting. Insert the um. It will become dumating. The last one. So it starts with a vowel like this one. Inom. Let's see if it has the same rule. Akya means to climb. So take the first syllable, a, akya, and you have your future tense. Now this one, the present. So you don't insert your um after the first letter of the word Aakyat, right? Because it is a vowel. So you won't be able to read it. Then you are going to use um not as an infix but as a prefix. So it will become umaakyat. And that's your present tense. Your past tense would be, same with this one, you can't insert the um here. Then you are going to use it as a prefix. It will become umakyat. Akyat base form. Future aakyat. Present, umaakyat. Past, umakyat. Now, let's study these sentences on the board. So, first one. I hope you're really good in reading now. So, kami ay kumakain ng hapunan tuwing ikapito ng gabi. I hope you still remember how we read time. Okay, so we say ika, seven is pito. And then we always say which part of the day it is. So gabi means evening, right? Ika pito ng gabi means seven in the evening. So 7 p.m. Kami means we. We already studied pronouns, right? So kami means we. I is always the auxiliary verb. So we are... What is this? This is our verb. You have a hint because it has an um there. What do you think is the tense of the verb? Kain. The, the base form of the verb here, kumakain, is kain. Kain means to eat. So, we are, ito, um, kame ay kumakain ng hapunan. Hapunan is dinner. Tuwing means every. Ikapito ng gabi means 7 p.m. So, we eat every, well, we eat dinner every 7 p.m. So, kumakain, the base form of the verb here is kain. Now, we inserted um here. So, we still have this ka, kain. What is the tense of the verb? Is it past or present or future? Not future, because how do we form the future? We should repeat the first syllable and it becomes the prefix, right? This one has an um, so it should be past or present only. What do you think? This is the present tense, okay? Kumakain. The past tense for this one is kumain. You have a clue. Past tense is always shorter than the present tense because... We, for past tense, we only take the base form of the verb kain and then we insert um. But this one, we take the future tense of the verb kain, which is ka kain. There's an added syllable there before we insert the um. So this one is definitely present tense. So we eat dinner every 7 p.m. All right. Second one. C. Bini bining. I think I mentioned this in my previous lesson. I'm I'm not sure which one, but B and big B and small B and then period means bini bining and that's miss. So C bini bining valdes I ta takbo bilang konsehal ng barangay. Miss Valdez. This is our verb, ta takbo, means takbo is the base form of the verb. It means to run. Takbo means to run. 
bilang means as. Konsehal is counselor. Nang barangay means of the town. So, town counselor. Miss Valdez will run as counselor of the town. So, I already gave you the answer. Tatakbo is what tense of the verb. We repeated the first syllable here. So, it means it's the future tense. Takbo, future tatakbo. What is the present tense of the verb takbo then? So, we copy the entire verb tatakbo. We insert um, where? Here. So, it will become, it will become tumatakbo. That's the present. So, and then the past tense would be, we insert the um here in the word takbo. So, it will become tumakbo. That's our past tense. Okay? Last one. Ang aking, aking means my. Ang aking kaibigan means friend. Ay sumulat. Root verb is sulat. Sulat means to write. Sumulat sa pangulo means president. So, if this is our verb here, sumulat, the root verb is sulat. What is the tense of the verb, of the word sumulat? Our root verb is sulat. Is this future? No, because we did not repeat the first syllable of the word sulat. We definitely have an um here. We inserted it after the first letter of the word sulat. So what is that? Not present because the present tense, if we are going to, to form the future first, it will become su, sulat, right? We repeated the first syllable. So sulat. If this is a future tense, then we would insert it here. Then it will become sumusulat. This one is only sumulat. It means this is the past tense of the verb sulat. And that's all for today, guys. I hope you learned something. We didn't have much time to do the conversion of those sentences into passive voice. So maybe that's your homework. Try it at home. And then if you have some comments or suggestions you can put them below like for example you have some questions please um, do not hesitate to put in your questions or you can send them directly to nactv at wcgwave.ca also please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and please like and share this video see you again next week bye